All right, folks, this is taking a little longer, but I'm going to wrap this up today. I'll break it up in multiple sessions, but I'm going to go till I finish. Now, that's the ransom. Jesus came. God came in the person of Christ into the world to do what? To give dead people life. Now, you tell me how in the world you going to get life out of a prayer. What says that in the Bible? How are you going to get life out of changing your financial condition, out of changing your health, out of a better family, out of living somewhere, having better friends. How are you going to do that? You know, life don't come that way. How does life come? Let's find out. Why did God come into this world? John 3. Why, God? Why did you do that? Did you tell us did you come into this world to give me money? Did you come into this world to give me a better house, a better car, a better wife, better children? Did you do that, Lord? Thank you so very much for doing that, if that's why you came. He who has received his testimony, received the testament of God, has certified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the word of God. So Christ speaks the word of God. For God does not give Christ his spirit, Jehovah, Christ, by measure. There's no, nothing that God can do, Jehovah, can do that the man, Jesus Christ, can't do. So what does that make the man? That makes him God. If he can do everything God can do, then what does that make him? That makes him equal with God, which makes him God. For the Father, who's the Father? The Father is God. He does what? He loves the Son. The Son is the man, Jesus, and has done what? Given to the man all things. All things. How many things did God give Jesus Christ? All things. Did he leave anything out? No. So what does that make Jesus? That makes Jesus equal, or should I say it this way, God equals Jesus. Why? Because God gave him all things. He who believes in who? God? No, believes in Jesus. What do he get? He gets life. The everlasting part simply means that God is an eternal God. The kind of life God gives isn't a duration of life. It's the person of God. What is God? He's eternal. And he who does not believe the son, what did they don't get? They do not get a car. They do not get finances. They do not get help. No friends. What do they don't get? They don't get life. They don't get life. That's the only thing God is offering you. See, believers and unbelievers get finance, man. They all get help and they all die. Everybody's going to lose their help. Everybody's going to lose their spouse. Why? Because the spouse is going to die. Children are going to die. You're going to die. Your house is going to get old. It's going to crumble. Somebody's going to tear it down. Not that mess matter. Your friends are going to die. But if you die, and when you die, what should you have or what you better have? Tell me about your bank account. That's not yours anymore. Somebody else is enjoying that. Don't tell me about your husband or your wife. That, that's somebody else's husband and wife now. Tell me about your children. Your children is still there. 
Think about you. When you die, what is it you better have when you get on the other side? God says salvation. What does that salvation look like? It looks like life. Because when the unbeliever does the same thing, the same thing, yeah, when he dies or when she dies, what won't they get? They shall not see life. But they do get something. God has something special and specific just for them. For the ones that don't have life. And it doesn't make a difference what they die with. You can die with a gazillion bars of gold that weighs so much that it tilts the earth. And they can put it on top of your grave. And if you don't have life, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get the wrath of God. And it's going to forever abide on you. And there will be no stopping it. You don't need better finances, friends. You don't need better help. Better this, better that. Or worse this, or worse that. You don't need any of that mess. What do you need? You need life, man. How do you get it? That's the question. Can I get it through praying? No. God won't accept that as a payment for sin. Can I get it by going to church? No. God won't accept that for a payment for sins. I showed you how you get it. How do you get it? Somebody else who have no sin have to pay God for your sins. You need a ransom. You need a man. Jesus. You can cry out to God right here, right now. Is it a prayer, man? I don't care what you call it. You better, you better cry out to God. For what? Salvation. Confessing that you can't do it. And that Jesus paid a ransom that God is willing to accept and has accepted on your behalf. Otherwise, you're going to get the wrath of God. That's all he has to offer to humans who die without Christ. Now, John 5, 24. Watch this. Two chapters over. This is Jesus talking. Listen to Christ. Listen to God. Listen to Jesus. Same person. Most assuredly, I, Jesus, who happens to be God. He who hears my word, what's his word, the gospel, and believes in him who sent him. We've seen that God sent him. Who sent me have what? The same thing. You have life. You have the God, everlasting meaning, the God kind of, the God kind of life. That's what you have. Shall not come into judgment. There is a judgment coming to everyone who don't have this kind of life. But when you have this kind of life, what happens to you? You pass. You see? And it's past tense. Why? Because Jesus is God forever. You pass from something. What? Death. You pass from death. Now, pay close attention to what God says here. He says you go from into, you don't just get something called life. You actually get into it. What is that? That's the ark, the safety, the high tower called Jesus. You become hidden inside of Jesus Christ. So if God ever turns around and look, he's not going to see you ever. What is he going to see? He's going to see Christ and his wrath will not come upon you. Chapter 10.
Watch this. Let's look at verse 10. We'll start at verse 7. Look at what Jesus says. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Listen, the sheep, the what? The sheep. There are sheep and there are goats. The sheep did not and they will not ever hear somebody else. Who are they listening to? They're going to only listen to the shepherd. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, how do you have to enter to God? You have to come through Jesus. Why? Because where is God? He's on the inside of the man. He will be what? Saved. Saved from what? Saved from God, the one who's pouring out wrath on people. You can be saved from your financial conditions. You can be saved from your bad house. You can be saved from bad health. You're going to die. Get over it. Saved and will go in and out. Why? Because he went into something. He passed from death and went into life. What's over in life? You're going to find pasture. What's pasture? You're going to find love, forgiveness, peace, joy. The things we talked about before. Let me just quickly show for those that joined us late. These are the things you're going to go in and out and find. You're going to find love, forgiveness, hope, peace, and joy. Forget this right here. You're not going to find that. That don't matter. Okay? You're going to find the pasture. That's the pasture. Those things. All those things equals Christ. The thief. This is Satan in his hordes does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, why did you come, Jesus? I have come. Now, if Jesus came to change your conditions, to change your finances, your health, your, your family, your friends, your living condition, if Jesus came for all of that, here's the perfect chance for him to say that. Right? Here's the reason I came. The reason the Father came and sent him into the world. That day, who's the day? The sheep. That the sheep may have what? Life. Because that's the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters is if you have life. If you don't have life, We've seen the Bible says you're going to get wrath. And that they may have it. It, yeah, this kind of life more abundantly. When are you going to have this life abundantly? Throughout all eternity. You say here on the earth? No, man. There's no life here on the earth. Jesus said, if this is my world, my servants would fight. I am not of this world. So why in the world would he give you more stuff in this world when he says, it's not mine? When he said, I'm going to destroy. Why would he be interested in giving you more of this sin, sick, cursed world? And why in the world would you want that? Abraham was looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Peter said, we look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. So where is this more abundant life found? It's found in the new Jerusalem. It's found on the new earth, in the new heaven. It's not found here. So if you're finding it here, that simply means you better examine yourself. Last one, First John. 
chapter 5. Look at this. Uh, I believe it is verse 12. Yeah, verse 12. Let's start at verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. What is he talking about? Religions. For this is the, written, this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. That he gave him all things. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. What's the witness in you? What do you what does each believer have? You and I have the Holy Spirit. That's the witness you have in yourself. He is the guarantee of your salvation. You can't guarantee your salvation, friend. If you could lose your salvation, you would lose it. If I could lose my salvation, I would have already done it. And I would do it tomorrow, and I would do it the next day, and I would do it every day. Why? Because I can't keep myself. Has the witness in himself. He who does not believe has made God a liar because he has not believed the testimony of God that's given of his son. And this is the testimony. What is God's testimony? Not yours. What is God's testimony? Remember we talked about testimony? So when somebody is testifying and they're given a testifying testimony that came from God, what does it sound like? It sounds like the testimony God is going to give. That God has given us what? Life. The God kind of life. That's what they're going to testify to. Let me testify about no money and health and all that stupid mess. They're going to testify about God, the life God gives. And this is this life. Where is this life that God is given? It is only found inside of Jesus Christ. So if you're not in Christ, I don't care how many church you attend, uh, church services you attend. Don't tell me about that. It doesn't matter. How many conferences you go to? How many Bible studies you attend? How many times you read and look at this video? I don't care about that. Where are you? Are you inside of the sun? Because that's the only place life is found. It's not found here in this world. He who has what? The sun. You got to have the sun. That's the only way you get God's kind of life. Listen to God's testimony. Whose testimony? This is God's testimony. He who what? Who does not have what? The son. And it's God's son. What don't he have? This person does not have life. He will never have life because life is not in a prayer. Life is not in your circumstances. Life is only found in a person. You can live the best life that any person has ever lived on this earth next to Jesus Christ. And you're going to wake up in hell. You can be the most perfect human that could ever have ever lived. And you're going to wake up in hell. Why? Because life is found in your behavior. Where is it found? It is found in the son of God. He who has Jesus have life. Don't come telling me about your religion. Tell me about some prayer you pray, some church attendance. What God did for you, bless this, bless that. No, man, that's not God's testimony. That's yours. These things I have written that you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know. You can absolutely know and be certain that you have God's kind of life. Friend, there's nothing you can ever say to me that would take me out of Christ Jesus. Nothing. I know that I know that I'm going to heaven because I do this. Of course not. That's stupid. I, I'm in the sun. That's it. 
I'm not that foolish to think that what I'm doing is a payment for sin. No payment for sin in teaching God's word. Payment for sin comes from a ransom. And we all continue to believe. And we only continue to believe in Christ. That's the only hope of salvation I have. I have no other hope outside of that. And neither do you. All right. I told you guys I was going to go until I finish this. We got one more to go. Thank you all who stayed through the whole thing. We appreciate it. Those who don't, I understand. Just catch it on YouTube. I'm going to break it up into three or four sections. So you're going to be good. All right. Last one. Why did Christ come into the world? To bring us, to bring us to God. You can't come to God outside of this. The only way you get to God is that that man, Jesus, bring you to him. First Peter chapter three. Why did God sin? Let's look at it. Let's see what God has to say. Look at this. Let's see. It's verse 17. Look at God, folks. You saw my suffering, right? So I'll I'll come up here just a little bit. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness, for, for righteousness, that is the gospel. Say, you are blessed. How are you blessed when you suffer for God? Now, for all of you folks out there teaching that Christians don't suffer, shame on you. Stop that mess. That's not true. And for those of you believers who listen to that mess, shut those people off. They have no idea what they're talking about. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God where in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope that is in you. What is the reason for the hope? With meekness, fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as an evildoer, those who revile you, uh, revile your good conduct in Christ, that you are in Christ. That's your that's your hope. You're in Christ. May be ashamed for it is better if it is the will of God for you to what? Suffer. Suffer financially, suffer in health, suffer in family, suffer in housing, suffer in friends, suffer in all the things that unbelievers want. For doing good that than doing evil. Now, here's where I want to go. For Christ, the anointed one, God. What about God? He suffered. How many times did he suffer? Once that Catholic mess of Jesus dying every time they do a mass is blasphemy. Get out of Catholicism, friend. It's going to send you to hell. It's a works-based salvation. Can't get to God that way. Christ suffered for what? Why did he suffer? What was the ransom for? The ransom was because of sins. He is the just one. And you and I are unjust. Why did he do that? Why would you put your son through that? Because, Kevin, he, that is my son, who happens to be Jesus, he's the only way to bring you to me. And how did he do that? Somebody has to die. Somebody has to die, and it has to be somebody with flesh. Do Jehovah have flesh? No. But Jesus does. And Jehovah was inside of him and put the body of that man to death. What is that called? The death is called the ransom. But because Jehovah was inside of him, who is Jehovah? He's the spirit. You and I can have life. God raised him from the dead. Friend, there you have it. That's the only way you can come to God. And that's the only way you can stay. 
think you can stay by staying, being good. Frank, get out of here. How good do you have to be? Do you know? How many sins do you have to commit before you lose your salvation? Do you know? Where's that in the book? It's not in there. So stop telling people that mess. All right. Uh, Hebrews 2. Last scripture, folks. We're, we're, we're here, rounding third, going home. Let's see if we can slide under and be safe. Look at this. Right here. Four. And that's a caption here. The purpose of Jesus coming into the world is to bring many sons to glory. Four. It was fitting for him. For him. For who? Jesus. Who happens to be God who happens to be called Christ, who some of these folks have a problem, but he's Jehovah, okay? For whom are all things? Who is for all things? Jehovah, for Christ, for God, for Jesus. By whom are all things? The person who does that is God. In bringing, here you go, many sons. you got to be a son of God, and the purpose of that is to bring you to glory. To make the captain. Who's the captain? The captain is Jehovah, but the Jehovah has to be a man, so the captain is Jesus. Of their what? Their finances? No. Their health? No. Their family? No. No. Their salvation. What is that, friends? That's life. That's what you better have. Perfect. Perfect. Through suffering. Perfect. For both he who sanctifies, who sanctifies, who makes holy, and those who are being sanctified. Wait a minute. I thought I am sanctified. No, friend, you ain't home yet. You're sanctified inside. You don't get sanctified outside until God get rid of the old nasty, stinky body you have. Are all of one. How many? One. You and Christ are joined. You are inside of Christ. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. I will declare your name to my brethren, Christ talking to the Father. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing you praise to you. When? When we get to heaven. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here, Am I? Who is he talking to? He's talking to the Father. Here am I. Where? In heaven, which is now called the new Jerusalem. Here am I, Father, and who? The children whom, oh, oh God gave to me. Folks. That's what the book says. If you got a problem with that, then you got a problem with the scriptures. You don't know God. You don't understand the scriptures. You need to come back and line up with what it says. All right. And he goes on and talks about all that other stuff. But that's not what I want to show. I want to show you this. Here we are. We're on home base. This life, the kind of life that God gives for sending his son, Produces a new nature that produces an unquenchable one, a passion and love for God. It doesn't produce money. It produces a hunger for the word of God. It doesn't produce, you know, good, get uh, whatever, man, uh, a job, house, none of that mess. It produces a loving desire to obey God. It doesn't produce help. It also produced an unyielding desire to be with God. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but most people don't want God to be there. That's a problem because he created it in his home. All right, friends, there you have it. I, I hope you understand. Get, get away from this hell well preaching. That's foolishness, friends. You're going to lose all that mess. You need the ransom for sin. 
is only found in one person, in Christ. That's the revelation that God gave. That's the purpose for the scriptures. And that's the purpose for Christ's coming. Nothing else matters. Okay, friends, take care.